15 months. When he has played him well, Robbie, what has Fanini done in particular, do you think, to, to be able to, to trouble Nadal? He's got the ability to take Nadal's forehand on. When Nadal rips it cross court, the double hander of Fanini has ripped it straight back to Rafa's forehand. 13. And it's a pattern of play that works well against Nadal. We've seen Djokovic do it ever so effectively on a hard court. And the times that he has beaten him, he's been able to match his backhand with Nadal's forehand. Of course, he's got the movement to defend. scale in terms of the way these two carry themselves on court aren't they barely get a larger contrast yep opposite ends of the spectrum that's for sure Nick Game. good start only broken the once in his first round win it was Rafa first game And like him in both. Of course, Francisco Roy pulling double duty this week. He's in the corner of Sloan Stevens earlier on today on this court. All three coaches in the house. Dal means business. But Mark Lopez, who was added to the team, good friends of Rafa, of course, since their childhood days. They were playing against one another, Mark now. Part of the coaching team. Fabio, Carlos Moya, how fortunate Adele was to have a world number one to practice with from the same island. What's the chances of that happening? It was always a, a great barometer and yardstick for Rafa. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. in recent years, Fernini, uh, his ability to hold the baseline, Robbie, hasn't he? Yeah, he's got the short swings, especially from the forehand. Just half volley. He's got such a loose wrist, so he can still generate power. And that's so key when you're playing the golf. <laughs> such a wonderful timer. 30 They're actually not too dissimilar in physique. They are both very strong, robust athletes, big legs. Fabio's got huge calves. He's, he's strong in the shoulder and back. Good width. Forty light. Nadal slightly taller at 6'1". Fabio, 510 is, is what he's listed at. Oh. Oh. 40, 15. He's been sliding. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, he was at his lowest ranking in a decade. Was Fanini? It's a reflection of just how far he's fallen in recent times.
see the shot making he is capable of. And we were actually remarking that uh, 40, 30. Fitting, he had to play qualifying in Bosch Dart after Wimbledon this year. And they actually got in as a lucky loser, but the last time he had to play qualies was at Cincinnati back in 2012, so it was 10 years prior. Court. He, he holds the racket head open. It looks like he's going to bunt it down the line, and then at the last minute, just flicks it. A lot of players don't see it coming. That's why he's so dangerous, isn't it? His ability to take time away from the opposition. Yeah. Pattern of play of the backhand cross court to Nadal's forehand. Nadal doesn't defend as well if his forehand is what he does his backhand. Remember, Nadal is predominantly right handed, so strong on his backhand. Game for Nini. It's like a nice position for Filippo Valandri to be in right now. It's almost an embarrassment of riches, isn't One it? Game more Coming from his seven. country. Certainly is uh, Lorenzo Mazzetti with uh, a win today, as well as Yannick Sinner. In fact, there were seven Italians in the final round of qualifying. None of them were playing each other, and unfortunately, they all lost. But again, testimony to the depth in the sport in Italy. A lot of those guys ranked between about 110 and 200. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Players are ready for play. Some will be moving on soon. Andrea Seppi, not sure how much longer he's going to be playing. 15 months. What a great servant he has been for Italian tennis, hey, Nick? Very much so. I mean, some of those matches that we've seen at uh, Stadio Pietrangeli there in Rome, that sunken court, seven deep, watching him toil and battle. American connection with Seppi. He's a place in uh, Boulder, Colorado, I think it is. Him and his wife they spend a lot of time there. That's what we were talking about. The ability to target that corner of the court. 15, 30. And have the firepower to pull it off. You would think with short swings, he wouldn't be able to hit the ball that hard. Promising start. The Italian. Most players will tell you additionally about Fanini is just how quick he is. Perhaps he may have lost a step or two or in recent times, but in its peak, he was lightning. The ability to read the game. His first step was something else. testimony 
to what you were talking about. If you want to see Fanini speed, go back and watch the match points they played in 2015 in the semi-finals of Rio. And watch the ball that Fanini chases down there to beat Nadal on clay. One of the best match points finishes I've ever seen. Oh. Game for Nini. He's leaked it wide. And Fanini does get off to the ideal start. So Fanini going to build on this solid start. to be too disparaging Love about 15. the rest of the tour but it, for Fanini at this stage of his career Robert are these the days he's playing for at, at absolutely. his age absolutely biggest of stages against one of the all-time greats of the sport somebody that uh, he's battled well with considering four wins against Rafa Three of those four wins that he's had against the Spaniard have been on a clay court, which makes it even more impressive. I think it was three in one year, wasn't it? That's right. 2015 was the year. That was the three wins, not the three on clay, just to be specific. Of course, 2015 was the year that he, he beat Nadal here from two sets Third to love CBT. down. And there was a rumor circulating that Flavia Panetta said to him, well, at the end of that second set, if you win this match from two sets to love down, I'll marry you. <laughs> And the story goes when he did win the match the following morning when he woke up and he says if you go on to Fort win the title yeah, i'll let you marry me <laughs> six wow. years and three children later and still going strong yeah what an awesome couple Let's first service Nadal and his wife are starting a family as well. And news on social media is that uh, the baby's going to be a boy. Mm -hmm. yeah, sometime in the middle of the late October, we're led to believe. Yeah. He's been in the house a fair bit this week. Seal. Fonini leads three games to one first set. And from Aussie player Luis Fleming on the left. And a reminder on the bottom right to head to usopen.org. Catch up on all the scores. Round two action, of course, being completed today. Heading into the 
serious stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please keep your voices way. down? From here on in. Out of respect for both players. Thank you. One major quarterfinal on Fanini's CV. Is that a little subpar for a man of his talents? Obviously, we appreciate it's not easy, but just one quarterfinal at a major in a 15 year career. What do you make of that? Yeah. I think he's probably just shortchanged himself there a little bit. Any reason as to why that might be the case? Clearly, it's been a brutal era. That's fair. Sometimes uh, the grit hasn't been there. And I think you need that to go deep in a major. Oh. Of course, couldn't actually play that quarterfinal when he did reach and he was injured. He was back in Paris. Gave Djokovic a walkover. Fourteen. Won't be any panic here from Nadal. He knows that this is a marathon, not a sprint. He saw it in his opening match against the Aussie wild card. Oh. Yay, Nadal. Love 15. Just starting to find his rhythm and range. A quick change of the grip. You can't see it coming. It's so well disguised. You've got to be on your heels because you're expecting another big forehand. Drop shots very much on then. the danger with the deep position if he doesn't quite get the length on it he allows Fenini the opportunity to 15 on. take his court position away third CBT. that's one of the serves that's good for both boxes that's how accurate it was Wasn't it under pressure? Held his position nicely. That forehand down the line of Nadal's, it's always a barometer of his confidence. How quickly he's prepared to take that shot on in a rally. Danny Valvadu, suited and booted this evening. Alongside Ross Hutchins. Looking 
very well old right now. Good signs here, Rob, for the Italian. Absolutely an imperative that he got off to a good start. What a linear strike. That ball not deviating on its path. That's how good it has to be to get it by Nadal. You can see he's inside the baseline when he makes contact with the ball, as you alluded to, Nick. So important to take time away from Rafa. This guy's been doing it well so far. won his 400th match Love on the ATP Tour. Again, just an acknowledgement of the longevity the Italians had. Also worth remembering, of course, he had surgery on both ankles only a couple of years ago, didn't he? Fifino. Carrying that injury for a long time. Well, he knows the game plan, but as we so often say against Nadal, it's one thing knowing the game plan, it's a different kettle of fish altogether trying to implement it. Italians executed well. Drastically, yeah. is it going to be a concern? Fanini's unsettled and he is open in 25 minutes. And there's an opportunity here for a double break. Toss initially was wayward, wasn't it? And it felt it definitely Newell's impacted please. the second one. Ah. Quite almost four hours to get past Karatsev in the first round at the Italian. Start of this match. I was just highlighting that it was the 10th time that Fanini had rallied from two sets to love down. And in fact, tied himself with Federer and Murray for the most comebacks from two sets to love down amongst active players. So we give him a hard time sometimes about his attitude, but. He wants to play, this guy's a baller. So 
always had that laconic style by the way he walks between points. Bar's not happy with the length. Again, he's clearly not feeling the ball particularly well right Third now. Fuel. now on the same side of the court as his coaching box. Been that sort of set for him. The rhythm has not been there. He's not been timing the ball cleanly. And the Italian has been there to capitalize. Forced error from the Spaniard. Fabio Fanini has taken the opening set. He finds himself a set down. Fifteen man. One thing's pretty clear already, Rob, that with Nadal not feeling it, for him, he knows the formula. He can ah, rush it, it, can't he? Ah. He's in his face here. He'd unsettle Rafa with his strike. You're spot on. Let's not forget he's been able to do that even when Nadal's been 100% healthy. So if he's not 100% healthy, it's double trouble for Nadal. First serve speed was just 99 miles an hour. Fifteen, thirty. The crowd beginning to sense the peril that their man is in at the moment. Once again, Fanini baits him to take the forehand down the line. He, he doesn't recover 
to that side of the court, does the Italian. He just waits for the cross-court reply. Nadal not prepared to take that shot on just yet. from our position here directly behind the quarters as we watch Nadal toss that ball up it is way out to his left it's definitely compensating with the ball toss Game oh, Fanini's done so well off the return just to get himself into the point First game, second set. And he's allowed Rafa to miss. And miss he has. That was a Djokovic-like return. Then an inch of the baseline. Neutralizing the point immediately. Not much for the Italian camp to say, just more of the same. Your thoughts, Nick. Fifteen love. If the match continues to unfold like this, and Dal concept particularly well, if Anini can sense the finishing line, we're going to be fascinated to see how that plays out. Because we saw what happened with Fritz at Wimbledon, didn't we? Mm -hmm. oh. I mean, I think the big difference is that, as we've said, he's done it before on four occasions. Yeah. He's shaking hands with this guy, a winner. Oh. Just, I'm just thinking more of playing somebody who's injured. You think, well, he's not serving as well, mm -hmm. you know, I've got to take advantage of that. Yep. This is my chance. Beat him again. How does that play into the psyche? Mm -hmm. Do you get more tentative as a result? Like nice. service. I mean, it certainly happened, happened to Taylor at Wimbledon, didn't it? Change. edged opportunity here. Changed the dynamic, didn't it? Oh, that was a touch ambitious. And standing on the run from Nadal, though. 15, 13. I mean, his defensive skills are ridiculous. Will flick to within an inch of the line. Once the rallies get going, he's fine. Ground stroking is no problem. there's ever been 15, I mean Nick you talk about defending aggressively pummels that backhand a power angle Elevated. 
elevated inside Arthur Ashe. As Nadal breaks back immediately. One game all, second set. Francisco Roig in the middle. Chris Qualis Moore on the left. Mark Lopez on the right. This is uh, the coaching squad. Very much raised in a no, no excuse thinking. culture, wasn't he? I listened to Tony Nadal speaking actually earlier on today, a couple of the years ago. He gave a lovely open discussion on what he did to Rafa. Of course, much has been made of that. Talked about building character. They wanted to build character before anything else in Rafa. No excuses, whatever the circumstances. Greatest competitors. And for me, the greatest competitor the sport has ever seen. I mean, his ability to problem solve is uncanny. I mean, how's that for feel? How's that for vision? But then having the skill set to pull it off. This was a tasty combination. So quick to get forward and plenty of shtick on that volley. He's light on his feet. Wonderful technique. Pattern of play that's worked so well against Rafa for Fabio. Forced tally up to 16 right now for the Spaniard. That's three breaks in succession to kick off the second set. again finding himself up a set and a break need to change something I don't need to change something what's going on here Have some tape for his fingers he's asked Mariana for something out of that backhand side. You're lucky if you get double-digit backhand errors in the entirety of a match. And if we've had that and then some in a set in a bit.
Right length and again. Nadal looking too shaky off that backhand side. This is longtime physio, Rafael Maimo. Physical looks in this corner. Reiterating that coaching is allowed. Comments from the coach's box to their player. Yes. It's been trialled for the remainder of the year from post Wimbledon. No lengthy conversations allowed, just a drip feed information like we saw there. over but then the lock this is not an easy smash but he's got one of the best in the business eye on the prize placed with perfection oh. Oh. Game oh, there was a bit of noise wasn't there from someone in the crowd as he threw the ball out. Positivo poco farás. Ánimo, ya estamos en el momento. ¿Vale? Two games all. Pero cuatro pasos. También le gusta ella. Venga, va. Venga. Chavos, poco pan ni la mía. Cambia rápido. Venga. Ya lo que toca, ¿eh? Va, yo corro. Vamos. There's plenty going on right now. But, uh, I would suggest you head to USOpen.org to check out some of the other matches. Thank you. The highlights. There's great Ladies interviews on there. You can pick up some merchandise as well. As players are striking the service, please. Thank you. On well, all the social channels as well. Find us and give us a follow. Oh. Not quite the match we were expecting so far, this Rob. Not at all. <laughs> And for me, the problem with Fanini in the Love last game, 40-15 up, he hasn't done, he hasn't had to do much to go 40-15 up. It's all just donating error after error. And then he got a bit passive, didn't he? Just pushing balls back into play, hoping for Rafa to miss. Rafa keeps going for it, finds a bit of range. 
Next thing you know, gets broken from being 40, 50 and up. That's how he's got to play, more aggression. is better than most. Phenomenal from Fabio. It's all out of tech. of 32 points on serve in this match so far, Rafa. Easy come, easy go on surf. Once again, with the upper hand from the back of the court. Once again, with a look at some break points. Piece of the paint just skidding on Fanini. Fly ball to right field, I think is what they say in this part of the world. <laughs> oh. Flying as keenly as the honey juice does in this part of the world. <laughs> Five in a row, the physio's out. More problems for Rafa. 3 2. from Rafa. Fittino. Out of nowhere. That is carved to perfection. Look where he holds the racket way up the grip. That gives him better control of the racket head. Let's, first service. Yeah, I think if you look very closely, 
with Nadal. You'd see he does that a lot, Rob, doesn't he? Especially on the volleys. Yep. Just taking a slightly more offensive position to return the second here. Forced error race, and it's it's not one you want to be winning. It's made 23 of those bad boys in the match. Fanini 18. Outstanding when he has made the forays forward this evening. 40, 13. His numbers at net testimony to that seven of eight points won in the match. Four out of four in this set. Despite all he's done, he, he will feel yes. as though he almost should be further in front right now, you would suspect. Yeah, I almost think this service game to cement the break is, is bigger than the other ones, Nick, because we're, you know, we're at the midpoint in the set now. You hold here, we are significantly closer to seeing the end of the set up to love yes it's nice cement the break but it's a long way to go we're just taking a little bit of additional time because of that sensible any trouble it was a rather desperate looking shot from Nadal wasn't it was nowhere near good enough it's a very important hole in the context of the set and especially the match now Love I don't remember ever seeing the doll look so unsteady from the back of the court. Do you, Rob? No. I mean, he looks brittle at the moment. Laura Siegmund, I think. Oh, the winner of the doubles here.
third C15. Those were two clean strikes, spreading the court beautifully. Let for service. Juice on the serve. Nadal needs to elevate his level and quickly. I think that match might still have been going on if he didn't. <laughs> Love your team. It was two sets that was close on to three hours or something ridiculous, wasn't it, Nick? Yeah. on his ground strokes and the forehand of Fanini is starting to misfire. Love 13. Fanini not getting too many free points on his serve either. The last couple of serves have all been under 100 miles an hour. The last one 99. He's just rolling it Thank in. Thank you. Looking a little frail, break points for Nadal. how much of a plot point that last game could prove to be in the big picture of this one.
15 lungs. Starting to work the momentum now. Timing is good. Tail end of the set nearby. Coach front right there, German Deich. Hasn't had a lot to say. Hasn't needed to say much. Oh. from the Italian, but ultimately to no avail. 14. This is Nadal at his vintage best. How has he created the space there to hit that forehand? Sending Fabio coast to coast. Again, look up. Early he takes that forehand. He's inside the baseline. They believe. Let's pursue Seen him get out of a lot tighter situations than these. Game There's the pendulum swing. It certainly feels as though it's on its way. for a bit of raw athletic ability. One of the toughest shots in the book, the backhand smash, and he gets some serious oh. purchase on it. from Nadal's perspective. Definitely hitting the ball that much cleaner. Shot. 30 all. Really contributed to Fanini's downfall in this set. Lots of unforced errors from the four-end wing. Ah! And there's another to add to the tally.
Third C14. Get a strong grip on this match. It's loosening. And he's already won a couple of majors this season. Thank you. He's got set point. Please, thank you. Please. Sneaky good second yes. serve. I'm not sure Fanini wanted it to be that good. takes the second 6-4. Where's the balance in that third, in that second set, Rob? Fanini will surely feel as though he should be up two sets here. He's broken Nadal three times. He's been up a set and a break. Yep. And here he is back where he started. I mean, this might sound strange, but I, I think from, the, from Nadal's perspective, it might have been the best way for him to win that set. Because uh, the mental scoring that will go along with Fanini now, knowing he had so many chances, I think just uh, it'll put him in a worse frame of mind. Whereas it was a, a well-contested set. And Nadal got just the one break at the tail end of it and closed it out it wouldn't be as dramatic easy view as it was a while ago for that particular trio this is where the whole point about coaching from the sideline becomes interesting because we can clearly see that Fanini's struggling Nick and some might say, well, this is the perfect chance for the coach to impart information to Fabio and help him out in this situation. I'm not sure any information will stop that forehand from passing you by, but... But, for me, the problem is not the information for him, it's the execution. And you can get given the best tactics, the best information, if your player cannot execute, it does not matter. And I think it's a very important point. And so, so much as this coaching conversation is concerned. I mean, you can see his reaction. He doesn't know what's going on.
answer back to what we were discussing earlier on. This is body, what we were talking about from Nadal, isn't it? Just been no excuses here. It's just not been good tennis from him tonight at all. Very small occasion we've seen him play his best, but... And he's, he's hitting almost 40% of his shots six feet behind the baseline as ref. He's just putting balls in play. And he's watching the Fanini fall and slowly fall apart, as I mentioned. Titino. Nadal with just two forehand winners in the entirety of this match so far. though without doubt from the doll at the moment yeah, this is more like it attacking with considerable aplomb very rarely lets that smash bounce just backs himself because of course he's yet to lose at the majors but I mean it's just kind of a silly thing to say really but there's been a lot of bumps in the road hasn't there this year at the majors in particular you think to the match with Shapovalov in Australia all sorts of problems there didn't he that's right looks as though he was finished in the fifth physically done right yep Dennis had all the legs 30, 14. he knew he had Nadal on the ropes he just couldn't put him away just leaked too many unforced errors in that fifth. Handed it to Rafa. That's well that done. Goes back to that point we made earlier about Nadal not beating himself. Yes. He'll put balls in play. If he's not playing well and just say, okay, beat me. And in fact, he did an interview with the Iberia. I think he's the brand ambassador for them a couple of months ago, saying the only talent that, that he's interested in is the talent of winning. Doesn't care how you hit the ball, how beautiful it looks. The only thing that matters is winning. Advantage for Nini. He's done that on nearly 1,100 occasions as a professional. Extraordinary. One game on My goodness ten. me. Shut the front door. I mean, the hand skills in this rally. That hopefully will give him the lift that he so desperately needs. Business. But 
particular shot has given Nadal a bit of business. He's had to work with today. That ball may have had it. multiple languages and understand what's going on you know that would be another complication if you wanted to stop coaching if it uh, was the way to go you know you have to get officials that they have to speak multiple languages what happens if you've got four russians playing at the same time you've only got three officials that can understand russian Well, that would make life a little more tricky in the officiating school. And then people have said to me, well, put the, put the coaches 20 feet up, but then you'll start with the signalling, right? That's not going to go away. There'll be gestures and, of course, the most famous guy who actually started all this coaching from the sideline was a Colombian. He made his home in Spain. He oh, was one of the best coaches out there, was Pata Alvarez. Of course, Four sadly passed away team. recently. And he was the first guy who would give signals to the players that he was coaching. Arms crossed meant one thing, scratch the ear another. Scratch the nose meant something else. start to come in a little more. 15 oh, The toughest possible shot. Which he very nearly executed on. He still only lost the one point when he has come in tonight. stage in the unforced errors race it was Nadal who had a clear lead I think it was 24 to 17 Nadal's kept his numbers down it's Fanini now who's sitting at 38 unforced errors and magnificent. 15, 30. His ability to change direction. And this, an 87 mile an hour ripper. Beginning to feel it. And that is ominous for the Italian. giving Fanini the, the shorter Fanini balls to work with right now. Already three forehand winners in the set alone. 
Remember, in the opening two sets, he only had one forehand winner. So testimony to the fact that he's being more offensively minded, getting better length. Oh. Nadal is three games to one. Nadal stretching the lead. Do head to usopen.org. Stay connected via the social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, or on YouTube as well. Remember the hashtag USOpen to join the conversation. There's plenty to talk about at these championships. match with both guys playing well at the same time have we Robbie no that was pretty good no bonus points unfortunately for winners in this sport oh. Love the team. Doubles over. Love 14. He's given the Fernini some opportunities. Please, He's looks thank at break you. points in this set for the Italian. Let's proceed. <laughs> Team. This man, of course, has 22 of them. Love the team. He shakes his head. Double fault number seven.
Dull at Lovely. no business winning that Australian Open final. Nick down two sets to Love. Remember, 2 3. He was down. Love 40 in that game on his serve to go down a break in the third. on that smash ball smash that Jimmy Connors made so famous this ground seen anything like Nadal it and just like Jimmy two, used to send this crowd into a frenzy this southpaw does just the same this is what they came for thank you ready for play thank you is the 12th break in two and a half sets in this match. Let's lick the line. Love 15. Some of his team might have wished for something stronger than water this evening mm -hmm. at times. Fifteen uh. 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 One or two of those honey juice drinks would go down well right now. This thirsty Thursday. <laughs> Two for one. We've got to get a, a last order in pretty quickly, Nick, because we've only got about 11 minutes. <laughs> Just Third think of that, as I said. <laughs> Almost midnight here in New York. As soon as he hits that forehand, he's on his way. He's got great hands at net. When he comes in, he very rarely loses points. <laughs> it's been that sort of night, though, isn't it? 40, 30. All the volleys that he's hit this evening. That's probably the easiest one. And he's missed it. Thank 
taken. His ability to reset, forget about what's happened and focus on the present is like no other. Just slightly losing the ball toss, wasn't he, on the first serve. Going to reach out. He's left for it. Italian down and eventually finds a way to get a hold. Balls, it's pretty impressive. Fifteen up. And a lot more returns in sets two and three than he did in the opening one. More back into play. to back from Rafa. 15-30. Fanini should have taken a few more steps in. It was low, it was awkward. Fanini still had a, a long way to hit this volley. Oh. to lose his way. Lose his grip. Thank you. Two set points. Stretching Fanini out, as we do. Drip into Friday morning here in New York. It's not here with the Italian. Yes, one man who did buck the trend in terms of that retirement discussion was Jimmy Connors, wasn't it? Someone who refused to hang the rackets up. Forty 
de lado. Chingy, of course, the only man to win the US Open on three different surfaces. It's a rather laboured looking swing from Fanini. He's got a big task on his hands at this stage of the match. That 91 US Open run lives long in the memory. I mean, to this day, that's still the most iconic. US Open moment, isn't it? That's the one that everyone talks about here. Do you agree? Close to it. Yeah, it's right up there. The famous rally against Paul Harhays where he threw up four or five lobs and hit the backhand to win it down the line and then just send sent the locals into a frenzy. Yeah, nice to see Paul Harhays on the grounds this week. Together with Jaka Alton steering Dutch tennis at the moment to lofty heights. Mm. One wonders if the lofty heights lofty. for Nini hit in the opening set. Well, a thing of the past here. Thirty. Nick, have a look at this section of the draw gas there up next if Nadal does go on to win. He mentioned that he's beaten in the last 16 times they've played. He'll play the winner of that match will play the winner of the TFO Schwartzman match. <laughs> Got Rublev, Shapovalov. He's the highest ranked players in that section of the draw. I mean, it does got a fanciest chances against all of those. Rublev hasn't been playing lights out of late, neither has Chapeau. From Fanini. Nada leads two games to love, fourth set. The guy takes another big step towards the third round. If you're an adult fan, you've got to like your chances through to the semi finals. It's a little earlier this evening. <laughs> 
Ilya Vashka got the better of Hubi Hercatch. So in that top section, I think a lot of people will be picking either Alcaraz or Sinner. Hercatch once again not performing at the majors. Yep. Can Nadal make the most out of major when Djokovic is not around on a hard court? He certainly did that in Australia. And there's no Novak here. Who knows? Just a side note as well this evening. It's a small one, but if he does win tonight, he will qualify for the Nito ATP finals. We know it was all but assured anyway, but whether he plays the Nito ATP finals remains to be seen. In Turin at the end of the year, top eight players will gather there. And it's nice an event, of course, but he's yet to win. Nadal. One of the very few omissions from his CV. This is out of this world. A little bit of some volley just to showcase his full repertoire. It certainly feels as though this match is almost done. Fernini's best Nadal tennis, it seems, is behind him. Nadal, quite the opposite. Three love. A one sided third, fourth set thus far. Shown on the big screen, what we're seeing. Just impossible to get out of the way of it, wasn't it? Full stretch. If it just stunned him a little bit.
quite as much blood as we saw. Mikhail usually was in his pump. And remember that scene, Nick. Smacked himself on the head with his racket. A couple of times, blood just started pouring out of his head. Usually back in the coach's box here at the US Open with Dennis Shapovalov. They've got the band back together. Watch it bounce off the court. Boom! Right in the nose. Let's have a look how it happened in real time. See how hard that is, hey, Nick? He knew it straight away, didn't he? But it could have been a whole lot worse as well. The job of the physio here is rushes on. He's got to get this tidied up as quickly as possible. Of course, it's a rule that the players aren't allowed to play if there's any bleeding going on. dealt with a whole number of injuries in his 20 years in the hot seat, isn't he? But I'm not sure he's seen this before. perspective that there's no impact on his tennis. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ready for play now. Thank you. Let's for service. First of all. Oh. Game for Nini. So I hold to love. I've got an unfortunate 
point in play from Rafa's point of view. Nadal leads three games to one on short set. We head to usopen.org. So you can download the US Open app if you haven't already. Check in on your progress of your favorite players, track the scores. We've got highlights on there. Available from the App Store and, of course, the Google Play Store. finish of course he's a grand slam winner in doubles Love isn't he and then Simone Bellelli winning Australia 2015 I believe it was to win a point since he sustained the injury. Line 30. His agent just behind. Thank you. Carlos Moya. Carlos Cos Costa. Yes. This domain almost never changes. Arms crossed. Just when he thinks he's getting a bit of traction. Definitely has not had a consistent ball toss tonight, has he? No. Expected plot twist here. Break points for the Italian. Thirty forty. This world, no panic whatsoever. This backhand, he can improvise so effectively. The short jab initially, and then just takes it early, shovels across court. Not too much pace, but it's the early strike that does the damage. Hey! 
happens again in the backhand, just to change direction. So it's so amazing about Nadal's ground strokes, the forehand he can have cross court all day long. Advantage, Nadal. Very rarely changes direction with it. But the backhand, I mean, he very rarely hits it to the same spot. He's so good at moving you with that shot. talking about all the trophies in the cabinet when he visited the Nadal Academy. He says, it's one thing when we speak about all the titles in Barcelona or Monte Carlo. Roland Garros, but when do you see those trophies lined up? One after the other, after the other. It just hits home. Keeps the cleaners busy there, doesn't it? <laughs> oh. Fifteen thirty. involved as well, aren't they, at the academy? Yep. Often seen on site, very hands-on. in the end but again the quality of the ball striking once again moving in the right direction just different gravy Some room for improvement, no doubt about that, Rob, but it's been a, a day where he's solved the puzzle. Genius tennis IQ. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Tends to solve most Ready of them, doesn't he, Nick? Twenty wins in a row at majors this year. His last defeat in the major was actually to Djokovic, wasn't it? In the semis of Roland Garros last year. Oh. Well, 
manage it up. It's not how you start, but how you finish is an apt one for this man tonight. Thank you. Out of this world. 40, 30. It's testimony to how good it has to be to beat Rafa. Just hasn't been able to sustain Thank that level. You. That's been the problem for Fabio.